Hello, my name is Susan Oxnavad. Today I'm going to teach you how to use favorite tools for teaching and learning, ThingLink. Let's start out by going to the ThingLink website at www.thinglink.com and signing up for a free account. You'll find the sign up button at the top of the page. Click up your new account. When you're on the site, you'll notice that you can log in with Facebook or a Twitter account, or you can make a new ThingLink account. The information is just basic username and password information. It'll only take you a minute to sign up. When you're done, click Sign Up, and you should be ready to get going. To log in to ThingLink, you'll also find the login link in the upper right-hand corner of the page. If you're looking for some examples of ThingLinks, the gallery is an excellent source of people's creative ideas. I'm going to go ahead and log in, and you'll notice that again I have my choices to log in with Facebook or Twitter, or it pre-populates my login to make it easy for me. Now when you log in, you'll immediately come to your dashboard. And this is a picture of my dashboard. Again, the controls are up here on the right. Your dashboard gives you all the information, gives you some statistics, and it also shows you the ThingLink images that you've already uploaded so you can quickly access them again. What's really nice about this is you can see how many times your image has been embedded in perhaps in other people's websites and how many times it's been viewed and hovered over like this. So it gives you some nice statistics there. To use ThingLink, you need to start with an image. And there are many different ways you can get images. You can upload your own image. You can get, get it from Facebook or from Flickr or from the web with the web address. You do need to be careful about copyright, though. Uh, but there are lots of options for finding images. I'm going to upload an image that I've already created. So I'm going to click this button, and it'll ask to navigate through my computer to find it. And so I'm going to choose my image, and I see it right there, so I just double click and it will automatically pop into my ThingLink dashboard. It'll tell me it's uploaded, and then it'll show me my new image at the top of the screen. Now, ThingLink uploads your image and has you all ready to set up and start tagging. But I'm going to click on I'm going to click this closed for a minute and show you what your dashboard looks like with your new image. And here's what your image looks like when it's just sitting in your dashboard. You'll notice it's very easy to share it on popular social networks or even just get an email link. What we're going to do right now is look at the controls that show up here when you're logged into ThingLink. So you have three choices. You can edit your image, you can share it, or you can embed it. And we're going to go through all those things, but to start with we need to edit it and add our tags. So click on the button there and you'll come back to this screen. To link a ThingLink image couldn't be easier. Once you're in this screen, you'll notice that your mouse turns into the crosshair tool. And if you drag that crosshair tool across any section of the image, you'll get a little nubbin. And this nubbin is what appears, and this is actually your link. Once you put the nubbin on, you can drag it around, or you can remove it. And that's all you need to do is provide a web address and a short description and also choose the color of your nubbin if you'd like and then your image will be linked. So for this first image, um, I'm creating something that has to do with tools for curating content. And so for the first image, I want to just provide an overview of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to link to an article. All I have to do is copy the web address here and write a description. Now for the description, you want to keep that short of, sort of short because it's just going to be something that people are going to look at briefly. They probably won't spend a long time reading it. So I'm just going to say, why curate? Because this leads to an article that talks a little more about it. Now, the colored nubbins here can be used to differentiate the different types of learning experiences that you're providing. So this is an informative article and so I'm going to use red. And that's all I do is save it. And there's my nubbin. When I'm done, I can add another one. I can add all my nubbins right here or I can go ahead and save. I do want to give it a title here. 
so I can find it later if I lose it. And go ahead and save it. And then you end up back in your dashboard. When you scroll over your screen now, your nubbin will show up. So we'll be able to see the nubbin that I created just by scrolling. And there it is. And here you can see um, my description. This is why I wanted it to be short and my link. That's all users need to do is click on this and they'll come to the article that I wanted them to read. So that's how you create a basic link. And if you can do that, you can basically create an amazing thing link image. I'm going to show you um, how to embed something in ThingLink. I think we're going to start with a video that is available on YouTube already from MentorMob. YouTube's a great source of um, information. You can quickly find a video and embed it, and so that's what we're going to do. So I start out the same way by clicking on Edit Image, and I'll come to the screen that allows me to create the nubbins. Now here, let me move my screen over. Um, I want to put a nub in here. You can adjust the size of it if you'd like. <clears throat> I'm going to put a nub in here, and this is going to link to a video. So, I'm going to copy and paste the web address right in there. You'll notice that um, immediately, men, um, immediately ThingLink recognizes that this is a YouTube tag and it knows what to do with it. And so that's a good sign when you see that check mark. And my description is just going to be video, what is MentorMob? And I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now again, I could continue adding or I can check it. So I'm going to save it, see what it actually looks like. When I scroll over the screen, you'll see my two nubbins. And when I click here, I'll scroll down a little so you can see, you'll be able to see the embedded video right here. And what's nice about this is you can click, play it, and it shows up right on your screen. Now, what you're going to notice is that I made both of my nubbins red, and this links to an article, and this is a video. So I want to change that, and it's really easy to do. Just go ahead and click on Edit Image, and click on the nubbin that you want to edit, and change it right there. You can also remove it, but you can change anything you want to. And I'd like my videos to be blue. So I change it, and save it, and it's blue. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you one more example, and I think you're probably getting the hang of it because it really is easy. So now we're going to embed a playlist, and again, this is a MentorMob playlist, but these are step-by-step -step directions that can be on the graphic that can provide users with some guided learning. So I'm still in the editing mode. I drag to make my nubbin. I copy and paste the web address. Quick description. And this time I'm going to remember to change my icon to green. And you'll notice, again, ThingLink recognizes that this is a MentorMob playlist. And so that's when you know it's going to play correctly and be embedded on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And when I return to my dashboard, I scroll over it, I see the green playlist, and there it is right there. I can scroll through it, and I can go to the steps that I want to and learn how to use this tool. So as you can see, tagging an image couldn't be easier. The only thing you need to do is collect the content. If you're just starting out with your first mentor mob, my suggestion is to create a simple one where you already have the content. So you can focus on the ease of use of the tool without getting bogged down trying to find the information to put in the mentor mob. And that, that'll be a good test to see if this is a good tool for you. Now, the next thing I want to do is go back to these three controls that you see when you're logged into MentorMob and go through the other two. We know how to edit Im an image. Now we can also share that image. And if I click here, I'm going to get some choices. I can quickly tweet or share it on Facebook, email it, Tumblr, or I can have the link to this. Any of these will work so that students can access your, mentor your thing link image but there's perhaps a better way to provide students easy access to this, and that is to use the embed image. 
So when I click here, I get this code. I don't need to understand the code, I just need to be able to copy and paste it in the right spot. So I'm going to copy it to my clipboard here, and then I'm going to go to my blog or my website and paste it in, and it will show up. So here I am on my blog page, and the only thing I have to do is click on HTML, paste it in, and publish it. And here you'll see that my image shows up intact, and when I scroll over it, I can see the nubbins. Now the only reason that I see the editing mode is because I'm still logged into ThingLink, but your users will see the share and the embed mode so that they could actually embed it in their own list. And remember, that will show up in your dashboard so you can see who's embedded it. And finally, in order to get ThingLink to work on your blog or wiki or website, you'll need to visit the ThingLink Help Center and click here for directions on how to set it up on your particular blog, wiki, or website. Um, there's a nice list to choose from. I use a blogger blog, so when I clicked there, it gave me a code to pop into my website, just like the embedding that we did previously. Um, if you don't have one of these, if you just have a regular website, you can also click on other platforms and it will give you the directions. But the code it gives you looks like this, and you just copy it and paste it into a spot on your website. It's very easy and it's very straightforward and it's tailored for the type of platform that you use. So that's all you need to learn to know to learn to use ThingLink. And that's all you have to do now is try it. Um, I hope that you will. If you'd like to just experience the type of learning activity that ThingLink can create, I do hope you'll take a look at this Avatar Adventures activity with your students because it is already created and I think it'll give you um, a nice feeling for how ThingLink can help you in your classroom. If you have any questions or want to share any examples, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.